coming Thursday, we're talking all things Metro Manila Film Festival or MMFF. This year is its 46th outing and its 10 entries can be seen by audiences from all around the world online via Upstream. Usually, the annual festival features 8 films that vie for awards after a week's worth of screenings. In recent years, after that first week, they would then allow additional films to screen, like a special exhibition outside of the main event. During these two weeks starting from Christmas Day, no foreign films can be shown in Philippine theaters. Pre-pandemic times, if there was a mega blockbuster Hollywood film that had a global release date within the period MMFF is ongoing, it would have to release ahead of the MMFF or wait until MMFF is done in early January. Sometimes, we would get really interesting films out of this festival. I would say maybe 25% of the films are usually good and possibly groundbreaking or at least innovative. And then 50% are same old, same old. And then the last 25% are the even older formula films. Grating. Trying hard to get even a little something of value in there. Pandering, uninspired and uninspiring. But mysteriously, highly entertaining fare that droves of fans and families come out to watch. Let's judge the 10 entries now. Coming Home, starring Jingo Estrada, Silvia Sanchez, Edgar Allan Guzman, from Maverick Films, ALV Films, director Adolfo Alex Jr., and it's a family drama. So we all know Jingo Estrada, Silvia Sa Sanchez, Edgar Allan Guzman, uh, relatively young actor. Um, I think Jingoy won a Best Actor Award, some other MMFF. Um, Adolfo Alex Jr. is a respected director. So I would put this in the same old, same old. <laughs> Fangirl, Paolo Avellino and Charlie Tizon from Black Sheep Productions and other production outfits from director Antoinette Jadawan it's a drama um, I've seen the trailer I've seen two trailers Fangirl and Magic Land so this I would categorize into the innovative um, category um, along with uh, the boy foretold by the stars starring Adrian Lynn Dayag and Kian Johnson from Clever Minds, uh, director Dolly Dulu, uh, which is a romantic comedy, Boy Foretold by the Stars. So I chose those two as the sort of in innovative ones because um, they focus on just two main characters. I have not seen the, the trailer for The Boy Foretold, but it, it sounds like, I don't know, maybe a BL? BL film, um, but if it focus on, focuses on just the two main characters, then um, so the MMFF is usually like the films are made up of like un ensembles, groups of actors. Um, it's a chance for them to be in a film within the year in a sort of big festival. So uh, it's a big deal for the actors here in the Philippines to be in one of these productions. So, um, so maybe it's um, partly because not being able to um, uh, shoot um, in or more people at the same time or together. Or in location so some of these films opted to have uh, um, I mean to have less people in the cast and focus on uh, the main characters and hopefully the story is good um, Isa Pang Baghari starring Nora Onor, Philip Salvador, Michael De Mesa from Heaven's Best Entertainment uh, director Joel Lamangan, family drama 
So, I put this in the middle. Magic Land makes Quaderno uh, Elijah Alejo, June Urbano from Bright Light Leisure Productions and Galiaga Reyes Films. So, Galiaga and Reyes are usually um, the, direct, the fantasy directors for Regal Films. This, this film, Magic Land, is directed by Christian Acuna. It's a fantasy adventure. So, um, I've seen the trailer. I'm trying to remember. Mm, there are some elements that I would say are innovative. But, um, I think, I think the story is what is really new or, um, it's about, like, um, if you play Mobile Legends or League of Legends or that sort of, of shit. <laughs> um, it's like, um, these kids going into the game. These are the, the, one of the some of the best players of the game, they go into the game to try to win it. So, um, there have been these types of movies before. So, not very innovative, but for Filipinos, um, it might still be quite um, nice to see that we're really uh, moving into uh, more animation, digital special effects, etc., etc. So, I'm I'm hoping for the best for Magic Land. It's it's at the upper tier, almost uh, the top 25% of my picks. So top middle. Uh Mangkepoeng ang lihim ng banda ng itim, Vong Navarro, Barbie Imperial from Cineco Productions and Star Cinema, directed by Topa Lee. Uh, it's a comedy. And Pac Boys Takusa, Zano Gibbs, Dennis Padilla, Gerald Napoles, Andrew E. from Viva Films, directed by Altan Tai. Uh, it's also a comedy. These are, I'm putting in the. Um, the lower 25%. These are the films that are there. Well, we're prejudging. So. I haven't seen the trailer. I don't know what the story is about, but um, based on gut feel, <laughs> these would be like the the cash grab films, or trying hard to crash to cash grab films um, in the vein of the of the. No offense, uh, the Vic Soto or Vice Kanda MMFF films. Like, um, these would be, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Uh, Suarez, the Healing Priest, John Arcelia Alice Dixon uh, from Sarangola Media Productions and Star Cinema, Joven Tan, director. It's a biopic of Father Suarez, the healing priest. Uh, Tagpuan with Alfred Vargas, Isa Calzado, Shaina Magdayao, Alternative Vision Media, Mac Alejandro, Alejandre, and it's a romance. And the last one from Regal Entertainment, The Missing, starring Joseph Marco, Malso Campo, Ritz Azul, uh, directed by Isi Ferrer. It's a horror. So... These three that I just mentioned, I would put in the middle also, uh, 50%. Uh, Regal Entertainment is, is known for its horror films during, um, during uh, MMFF, like Shake, Shake, Rattle, and Roll series. Um, so hopefully this is a, a better horror film. So let's just hope for the best for Filipino films and um, watch MMFF entries starting Christmas Day, December 25, 2020. How will we get to see these films? So tickets have become available to buy um, or reserve. Go to upstream.ph. Click on the MMFF 2020 poster that shows all the 10 entries. 
scroll down to select one of the 10 entries, you will see a button below each entry, a button that says Reserve Now. Click on that and you will be taken to gmovies.ph. This is where you pay for your title. It's 250 pesos. Yes, it's 250 pesos. And you will need to start watching within 5 days from Christmas and you need to finish within the day that you started watching. Okay, so for me, <laughs> let's talk about this for a second. For me, 250 seems high. I mean, if you want more people to watch more films out of the 10, you can, but of course, I don't know how much the expenses are for getting these online, right? So, um, so is this like two fifty pesos or five dollars, five US dollars? Um, I would, because um, I would think for me, ah. Uh, a lot, lot of people are watching on their phones. Uh, so, you won't be able to enjoy it like the bigger screen unless you set up something like from a computer, projecting to a TV, um, something like that. So, um, if it were not considering knowing the cost of getting this online for everyone to be able to access starting Christmas, if it were just 99 pesos or 100 pesos per film, you would think that a person would be able to watch all 10 films for just 1,000 pesos rather than um, if it's 250, you will only choose which ones you're going to watch. So at 250, maybe watch two or three. So that's 750 only. So um, you would have lost out on 250 more. <laughs> but that's just me. Uh, but if a couple, for example, will travel to the mall, buy movie theater tickets, say 180 pesos each, that's 360 plus transpo plus food, etc., you'd be spending at least 500 or 600. If you're a family of four, you'd be spending around 1,000. But with just 250, your whole family can watch in the comfort of your home if you set it up properly so all of you can watch. You can invite your cousins, keeping to the safety protocols, huh? charge them a little or have them bring food and drinks. And you all can have a good time together watching our festival films. That's my positive spin on this. And speaking of spin, this one's amusing. One of the films, Fangirl, put out a promotion revealing the male lead star as frontal nudity in the film. What's the film board rating? Will the nudity be shown anyway? Plus, the actor was quoted to have said, The frontal nudity was not needed in his opinion, but it enhances the scene Dao. It raises the level from 3 to 10 Dao. Okay, okay, so he's a grower and a shower. I hope the rest of the movie's scenes are better than 3's because I don't think he would agree to raising them all to 10's by staying naked. Although, that might gain him more fans. Talk with you again soon on our next coming 3's. Let's do what good we can. Hey friends, frenemies, titas, lovers, and pakeella merons. Thanks for watching Pake News Now. We have a lot of other videos for you to enjoy, so if you could kindly subscribe, that will help us out a lot. Please take care, and let's all do what good we can.